So we're back to grounding. One of the things that I've been finding recently is how important that grounding is. And there are surprising aspects to it. Because we try so hard to be, uh, because we favor so much the positive, the light, the up, the inspiring, we tend to deny the negative, the dark, the down, the heavy. And that's become a, a cultural norm. It's, and in fact, it's become very, very extreme, especially with all the teaching about being positive. A lot of people, in a really good way, are trying hard to be positive. But there's a tremendous imbalance that comes from that. The Chinese have always taught that life, a healthy life, is a balance of yin and yang. Yin, one aspect of yin is negative, one aspect of yang is positive. It doesn't, that their conceptualization of negative doesn't mean bad. Negative goes with positive. It's the opposite of positive. It's the polarization of positive. If you have only positive and no negative, actually in the end you have nothing. You have no movement, you have no flow, you have no circulation. Nothing can happen. Yin and yang are the fundamental forces of the universe that enable movement, that enable life to happen. And so to deny the yin in favor of the yang, which is what we tend to do mostly in our culture, um, leads to a complete imbalance. And when the yin and yang get out of balance, you, you don't get flow. And we all know the consequences of not having flow. So it's very important to be able to find that balance. Um, I have a friend who is a, a, a absolute wizard with energy. He can see your energy just like, you know, mm -hmm. you can see people quite normally. It's the world that in, he inhabits. And he always used to talk about your depths and your ascensions. And I never really understood what he meant. It's your depths and your, asten your ascensions. And I, I now have come to really understand that the depths is all that heavy and dark and deep energy and the ascensions is the high and the light and that positive energy. And both of them need to be in place for your energy to circulate and your energy to flow. So you'll find that when you turn everything into positive, so somebody says something negative, and I used to be like this very much, like, I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear the negativity. So I'd just immediately make a statement that would kind of crush what the other person had just said and turn everything, spin things positive. And it's really interesting. I just discovered that it didn't work very well. I, I understand we tend to be very afraid of the negative and the heavy emotions, but more and more, I've found that if I can allow those heavy feelings simply to find their own natural place, which is a sinking down, they don't have emotional power. They don't have emotional charge in them. And it makes your whole being feel alive and very empowered um, it, it's like all your, you literally it feels as a human being, as if all your circuits are being turned on. Circuits that perhaps at a subtle level, you, you can feel this, have been switched off for a very long time. And when those circuits, circuits are switched off, we feel this, not disappointment like, oh, something awful has just happened but there's a, an underlying sense of something missing in life. 
And when, when we feel there's something missing, we usually go and look for something more positive. And very often because of that, we actually miss where that something is missing. So when you can allow the natural distribution of energy to find its own level, so to speak, just like in a pond, when you allow the mud to settle and the clear water doesn't really rise to the top, but as the mud settles, the water at the top is clear. That's exactly what happens with human beings. So when you allow that weight to find heavy, you allow heavy to be heavy, you stop resisting that, and then light becomes light. And even when I talk about this, maybe you can notice how much you've resisted the heaviness. I don't want to feel that. What happens if you just feel it and let it find its natural place? The charge goes out of it, so the emotional charge disappears. It's really interesting. And even the darkest of feelings, despair, hatred, terrible feelings, can literally sit within you. You don't have to get rid of them. You're not even trying to get rid of them. They can sit within you, within your being. And everything, the, the circuits work. I don't know, Darren, if you're actually free and available now. If you are, I would love it if you could talk a little bit about how grounding works in electricity. So positive and negative is flow. So positive energy flows into the circuit and the energy needs a return. So a negative side, so the load will work. Um, so the device sits across both and the flow of energy causes, causes the, any device to work. Now, grounding is the, the return energy is looking for its easiest path back to its source of generation. And one way to do that is through the, the negative. The other way, the negative always finds its way back to earth. So it's always looking for where it's generated from, its source. It's always looking for the return back to the source. Does that help? Yes, yes, absolutely it helps. Yeah. So that's my, that's my understanding of it. Thank you, Darren. That's really helpful. So that is like a perfect match or a perfect description for what I understand about the human being as well. I, I've not heard it described like that, um, that that negative is always looking for its way back to source where it's generated from. But what I feel, what I personally experience, I've been exploring it much more recently, this grounding, because I, I'm just finding how, how much difference it makes. And it's exactly like that. It's like that, for us, the, that heavy, the neg what we think of as negative energy, the, the, the yin energy, um, or the heavy energy, the dark energy, it, it's like it's so attracted to earth. It's pulled down there. And when you can allow yourself, it's almost like having your feet this is, how I, this is how I experienced it yesterday. It's like having your feet even held in the, the energy of despair and the, the misery of the world. This sounds so weird to say this. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like your feet are, are locked into that deep, dark negativity. 
And when you can allow that to happen, you can allow all that negativity to be present, but in its rightful place. You can let it fall and, it, and it's attracted down into earth, but it's still there. You're, you're still connected with it. Like when Darren describes the grounding, that negative energy doesn't disappear out of the circuit. So energy is being generated and then it gets sent to our houses, so to speak. But when it goes down into the earth, doesn't disappear from the circuit the whole circuit continues to flow and then energy is generated from the earth and it flows around and it's just like that when we allow that um allow ourselves to actually feel all of that but let it into its natural place let it drop down let it be attracted into earth the circuits come on and now i i I'm beginning to understand, this is really, really new territory for me. Um, I'm beginning to understand why when you do that thing, which I have to admit that I've done a lot of in my life, of just making everything positive, why always there's this feeling of disconnection when you do that. There's a feeling of disconnection also if you make everything really negative. That, that doesn't work either. There is this balance between positive and negative, between yin and yang. They're neutral forces, so to speak. They play with each other. And Darren put it beautifully, that's what makes the device switch on and able to do something. And then you can start to look at the capacity of the device, how much that device is able to do. But if we are unable to balance the positive and the negative energy within our system that will limit the load that we are capable of carrying that will limit the capacity of what we're able to do so at another level ideas which we can say are very yang need to be made real which is yin in order to have full flow, in order for all the circuits to connect up. If we stay in idea territory and we don't do the heavier work, we don't let that idea kind of drop down. If we, keep, if we want to stay high all the time, we always want to stay there. We don't let it drop down. We end up with frustration and disappointment. And we limit our capacity. So I've met many people um, who perhaps because they'd been very hurt when they were younger um, or they're quite spiritually orientated, they don't really feel they fit in the world and they spend a lot of time working on their spirituality, but it's not grounded. They don't really do anything with it. And there comes a point in the end where nothing flows anymore. It's really interesting. Their whole life grinds to a halt. They end up with no relationship, with no life, really, with no business or work, with no money, and then a, a kind of fake happiness. There's a lot of work to be done from that place to maintain any kind of happiness. On the other hand, you can also get so um, so much into the the doing and the heaviness that you don't open up. You don't have that positive energy coming into the system. That gets very out of balance as well. So positive negative balance is what, as Darren said, is what creates flow. What creates flow is what creates movement, it's what creates capacity, it's what creates um, us being able to really experience life. And so in that case, what we need to do is find the right place for the negativity. Now, most of our emotional life is, um, I don't know what the electrical equivalent of this would be, but it's a negative energy sometimes also positive energy that's kind of got into the wrong place. I think of it being like, um, you know, when electrical devices spark, 
and it's to me that's like the electricity is kind of leaking out it's kind of trying to jump out into the wrong place it's got sort of charged up the wrong way so when the um our negativity becomes emotional um in a in a way that is unbalancing it's got too much there's a charge in it so we feel an emotional charge we can also feel that when we get very excited that there's an emotional charge in it that makes us out of balance so there's a peaceful i don't mean peaceful like when well, you're very very quiet all the time i mean peaceful a kind of clean in a peacefulness where you can experience really positive things beautiful feelings joy and great happiness but it doesn't have that sort of sense of discharge around it um where it's kind of sparking all over the place rather than actually flowing through your system making you powerful so that over excitement you see that with children a lot you know when parents spin them around and then children get more and more excited or when they eat loads of sugar or they're rushing around at a party and then they all end up crying it's like that energy sparking all over the place it's not flowing through their system making them powerful and happy and it's the same with the uh, negative emotions negative emotions carry a tremendous charge and that charge kind of um it makes us feel so unbalanced and when you take when you remove that extra charge that it's almost like the opposite of the sparking i don't know how you would call that but when you take that charge out of it that those feelings can again find the right place they find the right place within you then you don't have to deny them anymore you don't have to pretend to be positive or something it's simply that there are dark energies and there are heavy energies that belong in your system and when you allow the dark to be dark and the light to be light heavy to be heavy and light again to be light that's where you get circulation and you will find that the heavy gets pulled down towards the earth because that's just natural it just goes that way but in the ancient chinese system they talk about um a king so a king really being the height of a, a good human being forget about all our modern ideas about kings and but that if you see that as the ideal of a human being the king's job was to balance heaven and earth positive and negative the inflow and the outflow um in order to create a good life for people so the chinese have always had this image also of man being balanced between heaven and earth and always then yin and yang positive and negative and when if you look at an electrical device you don't see positive and negative you see a toaster that makes your toast i see a computer here that does all kinds of things for me i don't see positive energy in negative energy out or positive and negative flow i don't see circuits i don't see grounding i see a plug that i have to plug in and everything works but everything works mean that it means that a piece of what we tend to see as inert metal and plastic actually comes to life lights come on you press a button and things happen it's alive and that electricity it's alive at one level when it's sitting disconnected completely dead because everything's alive but that electricity literally puts life into the computer it puts life into the toaster and when the electricity isn't there the toaster doesn't toast and the computer doesn't do anything so it's a useful analogy for us to understand that it enables you to become less afraid of your own negativity let it return to the place where it belongs and the interesting thing is you'll be able to feel it but it doesn't have the charge it is just like joy joy you can feel the positivity but it doesn't have the charge and despair you can feel the negativity but it doesn't have the charge it's a really remarkable 
um, experience be because you feel all your circuits being activated. Now, we have tended to become so switched off that I'm sure that we will have to carry more and more, expand our experience of this more and more, and more and more circuits will become activated. But uh, allow your energy to find its natural place. 